What's up world, it's your boy Drew Marcy here for How To Rap and today's video is part one of a songwriting technique series where we break down the catchiness, the all elusive catchiness of Post Malone's major hit. While this is mainly a hip hop based rap education music channel, this video is not here to discuss whether we think Post Malone should be accepted in the culture due to his recent comments or his style. What we're trying to do here is analyze why he's been dominating the charts so much using songwriting techniques that you can use too as an artist or you can understand the music you enjoy better if you're a Post Malone fan. So without further ado, let's get into part one of why Post Malone songs are so catchy. Number one, early introduction of key melodies. One of the oldest songwriting tricks in the book is to subtly hint or vocally introduce within the first few seconds a main melody of some section of the song that you expect people to sing along to. Post Malone does this all the time. White Iverson, his first major hit starts with the double O-T on the new breed melody within the first five seconds that we would hear one minute later in the song to wrap up verse one leading into the chorus. I Fall Apart starts immediately with an orchestral chorus-like interpretation of the main I Fall Apart melody from its chorus that will anchor the song for the rest of the track. Starting the song this way accomplishes three major things. First, it fills in the dead space of the first few bars as it plays. Most beginning songwriters, especially rappers, just let the beat play for 48 bars with no vocal activity or 10 to 15 seconds if you're not counting in bars, which in this modern streaming first era can make the music sound dead unless you have an identifiable riff to start the music which we'll talk about in part two. Second, it introduces a section of the song into the audience's mind. Part of the key to catchiness is simple repetition and the more you can add melodies subtly repeated into the listener's mind the more likely they are to call the song catchy. And last, it gives a hip-hop like quality to pop song. Hip-hop is the genre that really innovated the musical ad-lib as an art Form within songwriting techniques itself. Runs, yells, screams, shouts, exclamation, and much more fill many rap tracks. So by starting a song with some form of an ad lib or vocal flourish, it gives a grittier feel to a pop record than the most only have vocals when necessary feelings of most pop music. Second songwriting technique that makes Post Malone songs so catchy is having a chorus first mentality. As a general rule, every Post Malone major hit starts with a chorus chorus after a four bar intro. Rockstar, Congratulations, Jackie Chan, I Fall Apart, Candy Paint, Psycho, and Better Now all start immediately with the chorus as far as vocals go. The easiest way to make your songs more current and more chart ready is to have the chorus start within the first 15 seconds or so of the song. Now don't let this be an indication that you have to write the chorus as far as the songwriting session order goes when you're writing it, but as far as the songwriting technique when it comes to to arranging the songs, a very good idea if you're trying to go for them charts, trying to sound more modern, throw that chorus on in the first 15 seconds to start the song. This is not a trivial point. A lot of artists, when they come to me for one-on-one -on -one coaching and we do feedback on their tracks, usually what I have to tell them is put the chorus first or cut the intro down, put the chorus first, and we're actually rearranging the song regardless of the order with which they wrote the sections. Now, in the case of songs where he doesn't start with the chorus, he usually jumps around melodies extremely quickly I'm talking about four bars maximum to keep the listener engaged. On a song like Wow, where he doesn't start with the chorus, he jumps around with the melodies and the flow and the tempo of his words very quickly in that first verse before rocking into the chorus still within the first 38 seconds of the song. So we'll go over the lyrics a little bit. I can't play the actual track because I ain't trying to get flagged. You know, we got to get that ad money. But since she tied a little money, need a big boy, pull up 20 inch blades like a little toy. So he does that melody for four bars and then the beat drops and a strong melody flow change with the G-Wagon, G-Wagon section. And then he's gonna go for four more bars and then another strong melody flow change where he was saying, you was talking in the beginning, back when I was feeling more forgiving, right? And then he switched the flow and then he goes into the chorus, done three different melodies slash flows right before chorus, still at 38 seconds when he hits that hook. Now, similarly on Goodbyes, which doesn't start with the chorus, he changes the melody within five bars of the song, starting with the don't 
Tell Me to Shut Up section in verse one, and even more in his recent single, Circles, which doesn't begin with the chorus, he changes the melody again with bar five with the I couldn't be there even when I try section of the verse. Now before we get into exactly why he switches melodies so much to keep his songs catchy, I wanna let you know that in the video description box below, we have a totally free video course called the top 20 songwriting secrets of full-time artists. In this video course, we're going to explain the songwriting techniques and tips for all full-time artists. Speaking as a full-time artist myself, who just got off a 15 country world tour last year and how to make every single songwriting session for yourself extremely valuable. It's a free video course, comes in audio book and ebook form as well. Click the first link in the video description box below to copy. And number three is frequent melody switches. Of all the tactics we've discussed so far, this is probably the biggest key to why Post Malone's songs are termed as catchy. And I think that he does this more than any other major artist in the game right now, other than maybe Travis Scott, which is changing melodies early and often. Every single Post Malone major hit has a change in melody within four bars and even sometimes within two bars. The first verse of Better Now has four bars of the melody used in the first line. I did not believe that it would end though. But then after that, he switches into a different melody for the four bars to start with 20 candles blow them out and open your eyes before ending the verse with a pre-chorus like and I'm rolling 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 in verse two of that song he reiterates the first melody of verse one and then does a brand new additional melody on the last four bars with the I just wonder what it's gonna take section now better now also has a bridge section which we will cover in part two so be sure you're subscribed with notifications for when that drops and of course I'll put it in the video description box but now let's give one more example of frequent melody switch is just to lock this into your brain as a songwriting technique. In congratulations, he starts the verse with the there was never friendly flow and melody and holds on to it for an uncharacteristically long for him eight bars before switching to the everybody want to act like the important long tailed melody to connect the change in rhythm in the beat and then ending with yet a third melody in just one verse with the put your lighters in the sky, which serves much like better now as a kind of pre chorus. Now let's just quickly review some of the songwriting techniques we've learned here today. Post Malone uses early introduction of key melodies, he uses a chorus first mentality, and he uses frequent melody switches, all of which lead to people thinking of his songs as very catchy and leading him to dominate the charts. Now that is today's video. Again, we will have a part two talking about riffs and how he introduces songs, talking about bridges and much more. If this is your first time watching us and you enjoyed this, be sure to subscribe with notifications. We drop daily videos here all about the art of great songwriting with rap, with pop, with everything. And we like to end these videos with a question. I'd like to know what do you personally think is the most catchy Post Malone song on the market? What song from Post Malone just can't you get out of your head? Now, I will see you in the comments. I appreciate you watching. It's the big homie Drew. I'm out.